Hi, everybody. We're going to do lesson five, piano part six, using an array. Okay, threaded code. Is, oh, here's what you set, should have so far. Threaded code in the piano world. Let's take a look and see what we're talking about here. All right, so, oh, my gosh, what do I have here? Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, here it is. Okay, so if I go to the piano world, I should have threaded code, which means uh, my constructor is going to look like this. Just a series of act methods. This is something, this is new. We haven't done this yet. But at any rate, so threaded coding. So my constructor is a series of method calls. Um, uh, it makes 12 keys using the while loop. For now, they play the same key. We're going to fix that. Threaded code in the key class. So same thing, your act method should be a series of method calls. Don't get rid of code that plays the notes 10 times. So whenever you do stuff, uh, don't delete it. We want to keep it because I'm going to check all those things. Okay, so don't delete code. All right. All right. Our code places keys nicely, but each key, key plays the same note. So now what I want you to do in your uh, lined paper notes, brainstorm a possible solution. We need to replace the G and the 3A.wave, but what can we replace it with? So what we're talking about is this. So in our piano... We have this G and 3A dot wave, right? So we have the, we we need this one line of code to be able to make all the different keys black and white. Well, not for now, just white for now, but eventually black and white, and um, not just G and not just 3A dot wave, uh, but all the key, all the keys on the keyboard and all the different sounds. So right, we got to replace this with something. What are we going to replace it with? Okay. Um, so that answer that, what would be an, what's your idea? What's your idea? Write that down. Okay. Um, okay. Now this is going to be a handout. So answer this on the handout. Um, our code places the keys nicely, but each key plays the same note, same sound, uh, my same key on the keyboard. What happens if we use an instance variable? Um, okay. So let's say we did this. So maybe so the idea maybe somebody said hey instead of doing g and three dot wave we should use an instance variable okay well what what would happen if we said public stream key equals g public string sound equals three a dot wave and we said add object new key and sound okay well what would happen well it would say add object new key would look and it's like oh key is g and then sound is three a dot wave so everyone would be g and three a dot wave so before we used had used a um, instance variable in the p in the key that helped us get them all to play different sounds right so that might have been a good idea except for they it's always g always three dot wave um so it's not going to work right all right so here's the idea so so we're getting closer if you came up with the idea of using an instance variable some sort of variable here um you're getting closer but what i want you to do in the handouts here Right, so you have the handout that looks like this. I want you to describe the perfect instance variable that could solve the problem, right? So key and sound isn't going to work here because it's always G, always 3A dot wave. What's the perfect instance variable that would work here? All right, so answer that question there. Um, see if you can get it. All right. Um, bu, 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 bu. Okay, so write this down. If we had an instance variable that could hold multiple things, so if you had key and sound or key name and sound file that could hold instead of just a, a, a g could hold a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x n y n z so if you had a instance variable that could hold multiple things like this um it could work right now but the question would be, how could you know which one to use? So if you had a variable that had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, well, how would it know when to use A? How would it know when to use B? Okay, so something to think about. Write that down. Um, so answer that question, how could we know which one to use? See if you can figure out a solution to that. All right, so this is, again, a handout. Grab this handout. The solution, we should use variables for the keyboard key and the sound file name and assign different values to them each time the loop executes, right? The concept, this is important. We're going to use an array. An array is an object that an object that can hold many variables and store many values, okay? So if you had an array, array is a, you can have an instance variable that is an array 
that can hold A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or in our case, A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, semicolon. Okay, this uh, expression creates an array of, so if we said private string names, so that it's, this is the same as what we're looking at, we've done before, except where we have these square brackets, square brace, square brace, right? So that tells it, oh, this uh, instance variable name uh, called names is ha has an array and you can hold multiple things in it. So it can, it's, can hold A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, this expression creates an array object and fills it with the string A through H. Um, and we can access, oh, I didn't answer this. It is, it is a box filled with multiple boxes. Add that into your notes. Okay, we can access individual elements in the array by using an index position number in the array object. Write that down. What that means is this guy is names zero, names one, names two, names three, names four, names five, names six, names seven. Okay, so these are all held in our variable, but they all have an index number so we can get to each one, if that makes any sense. All right, so when you're, when you're going to do an array, so let's, we're doing the same thing here. Uh, private string, bra square bracket, square bracket, names. Names equals A through there. So it's going to look like this, right? Okay, so we're going to think about it, an array, as a table, right? We've created a table. With, with, instead of an uh, instance variable that's just one box, it's a it's a one box filled with a bunch of other little boxes, right? They're, this whole this guy, whole thing here is named names, right? But this is names zero, names one, names two, names three, names four, names five, so on and so forth, right? So we have one variable that holds a bunch of different things. Okay, what is the index number for the string D? Well, I'll give you a hint. There's D. What's its index number? Okay, what is the name of the box? I'll give you a hint. It is not string. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Pretty, pretty subtle hint. Okay, what is the index for the string K? What's the what's its index number? What is the name of what is the name of the box? Oh 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 oh, I uh, I'm, I blew this. What is the name of the box that holding D? Okay, well the name of the box that's holding D is names curly brace or square brace square brace three. Okay, so names bracket three. Okay, and this guy over here K is going to be names bracket ten. So they're all names, but this one's names one, names two, names three, names four, so on and so forth. Um, by the way, what do these index numbers remind you? What have we just done that starts at zero, then goes to one, then goes to two? I'm not going to tell you if you don't know. I'm not going to tell you. All right. Creating array for the keys and the notes. All right. So these are called, so we're going to do private string. This is an array, white keys. And we're going to say private string, white notes, okay? And uh, these are a parallel, parallel array because when I press the A key, I want it to play 3C.wave. When I press the S key, I want it to play 3D.wave. This goes with this, this. These are all, so they're parallel arrays. So there's two separate arrays, but they work together. Okay, so I want you to create these arrays in the piano world. And so they're going to go right up here. Uh... Okay, so we're going to say private string square brace square brace white keys equals, and then you're going to have the you're going to have a curly brace curly brace semicolon, and then here you're going to have these are all strings, so they have to be in quotation mark, comma, quotation mark quotation mark comma, so just like this, okay, and then white notes equal. Okay, so by the way. Uh, it goes right here, right where all the instance variables normally would go. So right after the, the class header is where it's going to go. Okay, right there. All right. Um, all right, so put that in. So now the deal is, is we have our array, right? So we have our instance variable that's holding everything, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to go white, uh, make white keys with a loop and an array. Okay, and so we're going to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to do this, and we have to come down here, and we're going to, so we have our public void make, no, not this one. We have our public void make white keys with loop. We're going to copy this, okay, and we're going to paste it right here, and we're going to change it. We're going to change the name to make white keys with loop and array. So right now it's doing the exact same thing 
as the make white keys. Now, our job is we're going to replace the G and the 3A dot wave with our new array. Okay, we're going to replace that with our new array. All right, let's keep going. All right, create an array. Uh, we can now adapt our loop to make use of the array elements in, a, in the piano world, make a new method definition called make white keys with loop and array. I just told you that. Um, keep make white keys with loop, but F8 it. Okay, I already, sh I already showed you that. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the while to, oh, I just lost, I clicked on something weird and I just lost it. There it is. All right, see if I can get this. I can't find it. There it is. Okay, so instead of, we're not going to do it 12 times. We're going to say, um, why, what are we going to say? I is less than white keys dot length. So I is less than dot Okay, well, what does that do? Well, it says I is less than white keys. Well, what's white keys? Well, white keys is uh, this guy right here. And what's its length? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 12 elements long. So what that means is this is going to run 12 times and make 12 keys. So the nice thing about that is if I added, I set comma and put another letter in here, it would just automatically add an extra key. Okay, so the number of keys that's made is based on how many elements are in this array. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to change that to white keys dot length. What's next? What else are we going to change about this? Key key equals new key. All right, we're going to say white keys i comma white notes i plus dot wav. Okay, so we're going to change this. Um, we're going to say white keys, and then we're going to do our square brace. That's a curly brace. White keys, and inside here we're going to say I, and then over here we'll just copy this. I love copying and pasting. We're going to say white notes I. And then we're going to concatenate, and we're going to say plus dot wav, okay? And then this is going to have to, or I think this is actually going to work. That's fine. That's going to work. That part worked. Okay. Um, oh, I see. They're, they want to do it in two separate, oh, we can just do it like this. Um, it's nicer, it's nicer if we do it like this, um, because it puts it on two, it's the same, this is the same code, it just puts it on two separate lines so we can see it. I'm just going to, for... For time, I'm just going to keep mine like this. Um, okay, let's talk about, let's see, if, let me see if it says, okay. Um, okay, dot length returns the number of elements, boxes in the array. We already talked about that. Okay, concept, write this down, write these things in red. Um, the plus symbol when used with string stands for string concatenation. It merged two strings together into one. Okay, so this is not adding numbers. It's just adding letters together, okay? So what it's doing is take a look at this. All right, actually, let me just run through this with you here. Write that stuff down. Let's, let me run this through with you. All right, this is kind of complicated. Okay, so the int i equals zero. So first iteration through our i is zero. Is, is zero less than 12? Yes, so we're gonna, we're gonna jump into our loop. Add object, new key, white keys, what's i? Zero. Well, what's white keys? Zero. Well, it's A. Okay, so it's going to use an A. And then it's going to say, and white notes I. Well, what's white notes I? So white notes I is 3C. Now, what are we missing? The dot wav. So we didn't put dot wav, dot wav, dot wav. We could have. But we're going to concatenate. We're going to add text together. So plus, so we're going to add dot wav. So it's going to be so we're going to say that now adds it adds it to 3C and it's going to add the string to it dot wav. Okay, so it's adding it to it. Okay, and then it's going to put it at 42 plus 0 times 63, which is 0. So it's going to scooch it over 42. Okay, and then I equals I plus 1. So now I is equal to 1 is 1 less than white keys dot length. White keys dot length is 12. 1 is less than 12. It's going to keep kick us into the loop. Add object new key, white keys one, and white notes one. So we're going to jump up here, and it's going to be here's zero, here's zero one. It's going to be S, 
zero, 1. It's going to be 3D. We concatenate.wave. It's going to play with the S key and it's going to play with three, it's going to play the sound 3D.wave. Okay. Um, so that's how that loop works. And then as soon as we get to 11, so we're going to go through 12 times I is 11. 11 equals 11 plus 1. 12 is 12. Oh, we're in the wrong one. Is 12 less than white keys dot length, the length of our array white key. If we look at our array white keys, its length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and it's done. By the way, that's kind of confusing. When we're counting the length, we start at 1. When we're doing indexes, we start at 0. Kind of confusing. But anyway, that's how we do it. Okay. Um, let's go back to the spiel here. Uh, dot length returns the number of elements. Write this down in your notes. Concatenating. Um, what do, does this number return? White keys dot length. Um, answer that question. What would white notes three plus dot wav create? What would white notes three plus dot wav create? Well, let's look. What would white notes three? So we'd say white notes zero one two three plus dot wav. So I just gave you the answer there. I think. All right. Uh, make the changes discussed above. Do, 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 do. How does this work? Well, let's see how it works. We haven't. Hopefully, it does work. I think it works. Um, so we're going to come over here, and we're going to reset it. And so we have our twelve keys, and run it. Okay, first one A, S, D, F key. Okay, so it works. Okay, got it. Okay, let's just try one thing. Let's see what happens if I go into piano and I say, um, let's say this. Let's say I'm going to add one. I'm going to, I want it to play with the X key. So I'm going to say it's got to be in string data. So I'm going to say X and I'm going to, I, I, they're parallel. So if I add one here, I have to add one there. And I'll just say 4G again. So I'll go copy, go V. Right there, that should be good. Hopefully there's no, no problems. Okay, so what's going to happen is if I come over here, it added a key. If I hit run, that one's going to play with X. So it's, pretty, it's, nice and pretty, it's nice and flexible how that works. All right, here we go. Quiz, what is an array? Why does a loop work so well with an array? I'm going to just tell you the answer to that. The, way, the reason it works really well together is an array has these indexes that start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And when you have a loop, the loop has this index number i that starts with zero and the increments one goes zero, one, two, three, right? So that mean, that makes it really easy to just go through and do something with, hey, I'm gonna do something with that, do something with that, do something with that. So we can write one loop and one line of code that will go through and do something with each element of the array. How do I access string C if the array is named Alfie? Uh, so I wanna do something with this, what would I say? answer that question all right um all right so that's it for that one okay hopefully you're gonna probably have to ask for a lot of help with that